as requested, uh, I was supposed to talk uh, on future imperative of education, technology, innovation, and collaboration. As we talk about technology, innovation, and collaboration, these are very intertwined words. In today's world, imparting education without technology is very, very cha challenging. To have a look at how challenging it is, um, I could figure out from one of the English dailies of United States of America, published a few weeks back, um, a cartoon which says that, how do you think my first day of kindergarten went? The kid is telling his father. They didn't have even Wi-Fi. At kindergarten level, the expectation is to have the Wi-Fi uh, in the school. The kids of today's age are increasingly exposed to technologies, but we as educators are resistant to adopt technology many a times. Sometimes the change, uh, you know, when the change is inevitable, we act like Teflon coated material and do not adapt to the change. Fortunately, for the last few years, many of the institute has adopted changes and typically the learning methodology has changed. For After teaching students for last four and a half year, what I realized is there are various methods the, uh, of education or rather in imparting education there are various methods. Of course the traditional way is to have a passive learning. All of us experienced it. That involves lecturing, one-way communication, student listens to the deliberation of the faculty. That involves defining, listing, describing, explaining, etc. The established research says that 10% of what the student reads, they just remember 10%. And what they hear, like we as an educator, when we lecture, early 20% of what we deliver, students remember. Passive learning also involves demonstration, and uh, in case of demonstration, it went, uh, uh, it goes a little further. Thirty percent of what they see, and fifty percent of uh, uh, what they hear, see and hear. That means both audio and visual, and which we consider like having a PowerPoint presentation or a video demonstration or an actual demonstration. We consider it as a state of art in many of the academic institutes, including ours which is not obviously. The world has moved more towards active learning, and in case of active learning, what is happening is student analyze, define, create, experiment. Fortunately, uh, most of the Institute of National Importance or institu uh, which is centrally funded institutes have adapted most of their techniques to active learning. In this case, the research says that 70% of what they say and write is what students remember, and 90% of what they do. So the emphasis is like what the student does of their own, and that is retained much more than the others. But then the pyramid doesn't stop here. If we look at the history of teaching and learning, the blackboard, uh, I think it came in early 1900, and from there, um, the two world wars actually created a lot of necessity to produce people in batches. That means the soldiers were needed in batches. Uh, more people should come out in a single batch. Productivity should be high. Similarly, that in technologists. And we still follow that method to produce people in batches. And less of emphasis is given into interactive learning. So the active learning has transformed into interactive learning where in a classroom, students not only really listen to the faculty or to the content that is presented, or not only, it's not only act, you know, the interaction with the faculty, but they interact with their fellow mates and learn, try to learn from each other. It's a new paradigm of interactive learning. There are many popular tools and technologies. People are using some of us. We, uh, some of those tools we also have started adopting. For example, Moodle or have a discussion forum 
or having a collaborative tool for engaging writing programs, etc. Um, which is considered as, again, state of art, but if we look beyond, in today's world, the whole world is talking about collaborative learning. So in collaborative learning, the students not only engage with the devices or technologies or with the faculties, but they actively collaborate when they create a solution. It has been seen that some of the best technologists or rather some of the best technology students, they lack various skills and that affect their employability. Some of the alarming records that came out was the NASCOM survey that many students are not employable. And the reason lies because most of the institutes, uh, say typically engineering institute, they get the better students, institute like ours, and we cannot complain the quality of the students are poor or something. Or rather, I, I do believe personally that nobody is you know, poor in, in terms of material, uh, I mean the gift from God, where everybody is almost equal. But then what differentiates is like the environment in which they study and environment in which they develop their knowledge. So if we look at like why do we use technology in education? I, so from, it's, it's my personal opinion and I tried to enumerate a few of the reason. One is of course the interactivity. Without uh, interactive uh, you know, uh, mechanism as we have seen, education may not bring a lot of fruit. But at the same time, how do we inter interact when our class size is 100 or even 200 or even more than that? And when the faculty has one hour to, to talk and that, you know, how to interact with the 200 students. We were fortunate, like when we studied, it was 30 students and faculty used to interact a lot and literally used to go and visit every student. But if for a country like India, that's not a scalable model. So, you know, technology can bridge that gap and there are many solutions around it. Let me not go into it individually, one of, each one of them. There are various software tools, technologies available to have an interaction with the students, both online and offline while disseminating educational content. And other uh, issues that we face is while delivering the content. Most of the times the delivery is one way and many times it cannot be recorded. We talk only once on one topic. Next time the students may be hesitant or the content uh, which I spoke I may have forgotten. And then students uh, find it difficult where to look at when the faculty is not available. So that is another reason to use technology in education. Managing learning resources. These days we are flooded with resources. There are so many examples, uh, so many videos, uh, documents, papers, uh, research papers, uh, white papers and whatnot. So how do we categorize, uh, you know, categorize them, manage them for you know, better consumption by our student community. That remains another challenge. I remember those days when, when we used to go to the copier uh, you know, center and get bundles of materials, Xerox, be it book or class notes and whatnot. That may not be an effective way these days because the kids whom we, with whom we are talking to, they are tech savvy and they have their own gadgets to look at the information. The other uh, important thing is that the value of information is fast reaching to zero. Earlier, the teaching methodology involved like telling something which people do not know. Some figures, facts, analysis, derivations, etc. So value of those things are you know, very fast reaching to zero. The reason being those are available anyway over the internet, free of cost. And many, many videos are there which explains much better than me at least. So we need to have effective mechanism whereby we provide content, not only from our side, but from other, uh, from, um, other sources as well. And then we actually categorize them, manage them better so that a student can consume it. The next level is collaboration. If we want uh, the students to collaborate among the, themselves, 
or with the faculty or in our systems like the teaching assistants, some senior uh, acts as the guide or assistant for the courses, how to collaborate with them. These days people are concerned about privacy, you cannot go into uh, someone's room at any point of time and you know, disturb or, you know, that may not be a scalable model again. So collaboration also can be done with technology with uh, ease. Communicate, uh, and the other points involves communication, how do we effectively communicate among students. Uh, that involves communication um, primarily what we uh, have today is uh, using emails uh, as a faculty to teacher communication. But then again it has been proven that email is not a very effective mechanism. The reason being once the email goes from the first page to the second page, nobody actually looks at them. How does a student know that in the morning today what all he has to do? He is also a human being and you know, uh, so everything cannot be possible with reminders and all but he should have one single dish dashboard where he should understand that what all he, are his assignments and what all classes he needs to attend uh, and uh, you know, what all projects are, you know, are due on that day or, or tomorrow. So the effective communication also involves this day or it becomes easier when we use technology. Innovation these days uh, we, a single person sitting over with a cup of coffee or tea may not be a good scenario to innovate. It involves, again, a lot of uh, all of it, like interactivity, then collaboration, communication, etc. And an environment where he can experiment things. So that also involves use of technology today. Variety of uh, preferences and choice, these days students are flooded with choices and whatever choice we think is good, they may not think the same. For example, in our institute, initially we tried to give the students a laptop award choice. That failed miserably because after a few years or two, three years, we came to know that most of the, or we experienced that most of the student doesn't like what laptop we provide. So they get their own devices. So now we have a policy like bring your own device. Whatever you like, be it Mac OS, be it, be it a uh, desktop, be it a laptop, whatever device you want to use, you are free to use it. As long as you do the experiments or it is doable in your machine, we are fine with it. So that also, the, then how, how do we um, have, ensure that all these works in our environment? that technology can only solve this problem, otherwise we cannot have manpower deployed and expertise for each of these platforms. Other challenges that we find it easier is like format events, summative assessments, many a times evaluating 200 programs when the student write is very humanly very tiresome and difficult. First, you know, for the first 10 cases, one might remain really concentrated, but later on, you know, the concentration also gives, gives up. So we tried with automatic assessment and automatic, you know, uh, evaluation uh, mechanism. Uh, so with all in in all of these, we involved technology as a solution for imparting better education. And what is in technology uh, technology education, uh, or what is what is the technology part in education? Typically, we think like a smart board. Uh, maybe and laptop, desktop, some smart devices uh, and maybe a video enabled interaction what is considered uh, as state of art in today's societies is not, the, is not really the case. What is expected today in today's world is that a student have, should have the core subject knowledge of 21st century, the subject should be up to, up to date, that is obvious that comes from standards and assessment, curriculum, etc. But along with that, there are much more uh, which is expected from a student. That is life skill. Increasingly, the corporates, the companies, research organizations are asking for the life skill of the students, how he can collaborate with others, how he can interact with people, how he can disseminate his ideas, etc. The innovation skill, this another buzzword around that how the student is prepared to think out of box and non-traditional manner rather than working on an existing problem and know how to solve it. 
the engineering sciences have evolved quite a lot, and specifically the area of information technology. As we know, the repetitive jobs are fast dying because of the automation that is happening in the industry. So only in, in future, the jobs that are going to survive which involves creativity, and not only in the engineering discipline, and we are going to most likely see it in other disciplines as well. So the emphasis is on learning and innovation skill, and of course the information technology and the media skill is another important aspect. But then there are other arenas as well, like professional development and the learning environment. So with all these components together, it becomes increasingly difficult as an educator these days. And today we, we feel we are really challenged to impart quality education to the students. We do engage with students uh, a lot on social media as well. And the kind of questions these days we are facing from the perspective student, the first year students, that while taking admission in your institute, what kind of courses will go through, what kind of curriculum will go through, of course those are basic questions, and how those courses will be conducted, and not from birth chance, the students are really asking, and we have opened social media for that, and we are trying to reply and we are trying to adapt, and those questions are amazing, like what is the coding, one of the very interesting questions, um, we received was, what is the coding culture in the institute? It took some time for me to answer, like what should I answer? And uh, if I want to do this, 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 what is the facility available or what kind of encouragement available in the institute? Students are going up to that level. So they exactly know what they want. And in case, if at IIIT Guwahati, if we cannot provide that environment, student will definitely find another alternative. Things are different in case of IITs because of the name and the brand, uh, because students will anyway go there, but in our case, of course, the student has choice. So, personally, I, I, I could, uh, you know, categorize in four different quadrants. One is, one involves the communication, of course, the class management, the lectures, the content, etc., and the assessments. For doing all this, we are increasingly using technology. Some of them are like learning management system. For example, for learning management system, we are using Moodle, which is working very effectively for us. We are increasingly using Wiki. Many of the faculty members are using Wiki, so that students can write collaboratively and you know, faculties are involved. Even there are collaborative, other collaborative tools we are using. We are increasingly writing blogs. Both faculty and student members all are active in writing blogs. We have an official blog where we present, uh, you know, where we write about our ideas, our achievements, uh, our engagement with the students, our students' experience, and where not so good experience as well. And that is open to the whole world. We are also uh, planning to have some broadcasting mechanism, either podcasting or a YouTube channel. We are also thinking to have an e-portfolio management, etc. So we, in our own humble way, we are a small institute which, uh, which began its journey in 2013, and I'm associated with the institute from 2014. So in the last four and five years, we made some mark uh, in, the, in the domain, and uh, Looking forward uh, uh, from our team to do much more in the future. We know that a lot of tasks are still to be done. Some of the interesting technologies we started leveraging, and, and, you know, and that is one of the reasons why I came here, uh, is like we find very thrilled about the technology like virtualization. What we found out that the servers and the resources what we procured way back in 2013 and 14, most of them are sitting ideal. The reason being, the process or the application which runs on them typically involves or typically runs on one single core. And most of our machines are 16 core, 32 core machines. So the remaining like 15 or 31 cores are unused totally, which is a sheer wastage of resources. And at the same time, there are other students or faculty members who are striving for resources. So we um, started virtualizing our environment 
as late as last year and this year. So almost everything is virtualized now, at least the server resources. And what we do is on the fly, we create machines um, using virtualization tools and use the resources effectively. On the single hardware, we are running multiple machines and utilizing the scale resources of memory, GPU, CPU, etc. IO in a better manner, uh, storage than earlier. And uh, VMware, I'm using uh, VMware tools and technologies. Of course, I'm, I'm not, I do not have, uh, I'm, uh, I'm not experienced all the portfolio of VMware, but some of the tools like vSphere and uh, um, the bare metal hypervisor I'm using for more than a decade, and it was a wonderful experience to use it. And I'm sure VMware will support uh, educational institute like ours with tools and technologies in future. Thank you very much for patient listening.